Welcome to our home again, this time in the garden. We felt an appropriate place for our Easter worship. First, we're going to bless the new fire and the lighting of the Paschal candle. The new fire recalls the symbolically the resurrection of Christ. And from the fire, the Paschal candle is lit. And this remains lit for all services up to Ascension Day. Secondly, we're going to engage with God's word in the Bible. And thirdly, the blessing of the water and our baptismal promises, using water as a symbol of the renewing life-giving presence of Christ. And finally, the first Eucharist, Holy Communion of Easter, where we proclaim the death and resurrection of Christ until he comes again. The Lord be with you. Dear friends in Christ, on the most holy morning when Jesus passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. Let us pray. Father, we share in the light of your glory through your Son, the light of the world. Make this new fire holy and inflame us with new hope. Purify our minds by this Easter celebration and bring us one day to the feast of eternal light. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ yesterday, today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him, and all the ages to him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. These are the incense in which we recognise the cross uh, and the nails in the cross of Jesus' wounds. May the light of Christ rise in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. This is the morning when Jesus Christ broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Father, how wonderful your care for us. How boundless your merciful love. The power of this holy morning dispels all evil, washes guilt away, restores lost innocence, brings mourners joy, casts out hatred, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. We are truly breath blessed when heaven is wedded to earth and we are reconciled to God. Accept this candle to dispel the darkness. May the morning star which never sets find this flame still burning. Christ, the morning star, who came back from the dead and shed his peaceful light on all mankind. Your son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen to the word of God from Romans chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? 
You were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so we'd no longer be enslaved to sin. For once who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. And we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. For the life he lives, he lived to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The Holy Gospel is written in the 28th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. After the Sabbath, as the first light of the new week dawned, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to keep vigil at the tomb. Suddenly, the earth reeled and rocked under their feet as God's angel came down from heaven. It came right up to where they were standing. He rolled back the stone and then he sat on it. Shafts of lightning blazed from him. His garments shimmered snow white. The guards at the tomb were scared to death. They were so frightened, they couldn't move. The angel spoke to the women. There's nothing to fear here. I know you're looking for Jesus, the one they nailed to the cross. But he's not here. He was raised, just as he said. Come and look at the place where he was placed. Now get on your way quickly and tell his disciples he is risen from the dead. He is going on ahead of you to Galilee, and you will see him there. That's the message. The women, deep in wonder and full of joy, lost no time in leaving the tomb, and they ran to tell the disciples. Then Jesus met them, stopping them in their tracks. Good morning, he said. And they fell on their knees, embraced his feet, and worshipped him. And Jesus said, you're holding on to me for dear life. Don't be frightened like that. Go tell my brothers that they are to go to Galilee, and there I'll meet them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I was privileged a few years ago with my wife Janine to visit the Holy Lands. We've been invited to see how we could serve some of the young people who had never experienced anything but war and conflict. We spent time in conversation, listening and sharing. Our ministry at that time was working with young people in inner city London, some facing war and conflict within that inner city of London. We offered them a safe space and a home in the church and used theatre to teach life skills and faith experience. They invited us to return, bringing our youngsters to role play through theatre skills, what living in peace feels like. We had planned to return this summer, but I'm afraid that's had to be put on hold, of course. But later on in that trip to the Holy Lands, we went on a pilgrimage, for me a personal pilgrimage, to search for Jesus. And in the midst of the tourist trappings and the conflict and tension, I found it difficult to find him for myself. But eventually, I found him in two places. The first was in a cell under Caiaphas's house, where Jesus was held as he awaited his trial and execution. I tell you, as I went down those steps into that cell, it was pitch black. I was handed a candle by our Jewish guide. And I went down and there were some other cells uh, not too far down. I went even further. Right at the bottom there was one cell where they said that that is where Jesus 
was held. And then the Jewish guide thrust into my hand a copy of the Psalms, yes, Jesus' prayer book, and invited me to read Psalm 88. Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I am overwhelmed with troubles and my life draws near to death. I'm counted among those who go down to the pit. I'm lung without strength. I'm set apart with the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave. You have put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. You have overwhelmed me with all your waves. You've taken me from my closest friends and made me repulsive to them. I am confined and I cannot escape. My eyes are dim with grief. How powerful was that in that deep dungeon? And as I emerged from the darkness, all I could hear was some fervent Christians, pilgrims singing lusty choruses. I wanted to shout, he's not up here, he's down there, suffering for us in the darkness. Of course, they were celebrating him in the light. The second time I encountered Jesus was at the empty tomb in the Garden of Resurrection, not the Sepulchre. It's just below the bus station in Jerusalem. It had a round stone in a groove rolled away from the entrance. It was a tomb, but it was full of light. I felt warm and energized. There was a peace in that garden I had never experienced before. We returned home, back to the ordinary, but I retained in my heart those two experiences which have sustained my faith, for it spoke of suffering and peace, darkness to light. And surely for all of us in this is the case, as struggling disciples, we search for the holy in the midst of the ordinary. This was the case for the disciples after Jesus rose from the dead. In the gospel reading, we heard the angel telling the women in the tomb that Jesus would go before his disciples to Galilee. They would see him there. And then Jesus himself would appear to the women and told them to tell the disciples that they would see him in Galilee. In other words, they would find the risen Jesus in their ordinary lives. The disciples didn't have to do anything extraordinary to meet the risen Jesus after he rose from the dead. Simply return home to Galilee for their ordinary everyday lives. We've celebrated Holy Week together in our homes. We've entered into the passion, death and resurrection of Jesus, the pain and the peace. And now we'll discover what it all means in the present time. With eyes of faith, we will see the risen Jesus and meet the risen Jesus in our own circumstances. We begin our celebrations this morning with a service of light which symbolized Jesus rising from the dead and bringing light to all of us. The light of Christ has shone in the world, scattering darkness forever. We've been waiting for this moment for thousands of years. And the high point in God's plan for us is the resurrection. This is the greatest celebration of the church. This day is the most blessed of all as we proclaim the miracle of Easter. The birds are singing in celebration. In the New Testament, we heard Paul tell the Romans that when we were baptized, we left behind our old life, and we, so to speak, entered the tomb with Jesus and rose again to new life. When we were baptized, we took on a new lifestyle, leaving sin behind to live a new life with Christ. In a moment, I will bless the new Easter holy water will renew our baptismal promises, and I will bless you all with a new Easter holy water. The better, the better. Notice, though, that the water is at the foot of the cross, symbolizing the new life that Christ uh, gives us by dying and rising for us. The new life of grace flows from the cross. When we were baptized, we entered the tomb with Jesus, died to sin, and rose with Jesus to live a new life of faith. During this Lent, 
We went into the desert as Jesus did, and we tried to overcome our sin and temptation. When we renew our baptismal promises soon and reject Satan, let's really mean what we say. Let's really rise to a new life with Jesus leaving sin behind. Let's really try to leave the pattern of sin and selfishness behind. We've had an extraordinary and beautiful celebration in this week of the passion, death and resurrection of Jesus together, albeit in our own homes. The risen Jesus has gone before us to Galilee. And now we'll continue with our ordinary lives. With eyes of faith, we'll see the risen Jesus present in our everyday lives in these extraordinary times and meet him. We want to see Jesus. Alleluia. Let us now renew the promises made at our baptism, affirming our allegiance to Christ and our rejection of all that is evil. Therefore I ask, do you turn to Christ? I turn to Christ. Do you repent of your sins? I repent of my sins. Do you renounce evil? I renounce evil. And now I ask you to make a profession of Christian faith into which you were baptized and in which you will live and grow. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all those who've been baptized in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I say, the wetter, the better. And so to our prayers. In the joy of this Easter morning, let us pray to the God who loves us completely. We think of the church celebrating in homes all over the world. We pray for a deepening of love and faith that the joy and conviction of Christians may be so radiant that all who are lost, weary and searching may be directed to lasting inner peace. Risen Lord, live in us all. We pray that from every world crisis and tragedy, some good may come. Every problem become an opportunity to love and to be loved. We've already witnessed so much sacrificial love in those who serve on the front line, all our key workers. Risen Lord, live in us. We pray for all who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, especially for those who we know and for those who have asked for our prayers. Risen Lord, live in us. We remember all who have died recently and those whose anniversaries fall at this time, that they may share your risen life forever. And so in a moment of silence, let's pray for those we love and those who love us and for those who have asked for our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers 
for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and he said, Peace be with you. And then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another and me a sign of peace. And now let us prepare this Easter Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of our salvation. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who are sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. And as your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he opened wide his arms was on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. And so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name evermore praising you and saying holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest lord you are holy indeed the source of all holiness and grant that by the power of your holy spirit and according to your holy will these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, he gave you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate 
this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we and all the company of saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory for yours, almighty Father, Now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. For Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ keep us in eternal life. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Thank you so much for joining me on this Easter morning. Uh, but before we depart and leave and go our way, um, I just wanted to share with you a tradition that uh, we often have within our churches, uh, and that is that uh, we have eggs, uh, Easter eggs here, uh, many of them, which uh, I had hoped we'd have been able to share with the children of our church and uh, hiding them all over the church so you go and collect them. Uh, I've hidden one or two others just in the, in, in the <laughs> garden, which I'll go and try and find. Um, All of these eggs are hollow eggs, and also they're hollow for a reason, because when you break them open, it reminds us of the empty tomb and the risen Christ. <laughs> the Trinity, too, with Easter eggs. <laughs> and now, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us and those we love, now and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Gee, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.